Floyd Mayweather versus Logan Paul is just another event in boxing history that proves that most people don't know shit about boxing. This is, of course, a video in the aftermath of the fight, quote unquote, between Mayweather and Logan Paul. And there seems to be a, a minority, I want to say, from what I've seen, but a sizable minority of boxing fans who claim to be hardcore boxing fans. And they are adamant that Mayweather could have, could have knocked Logan Paul out any moment he wanted to. But he chose not to because it was an exhibition. I've even seen uh, that there's a notorious article um, quoting Bob Arum. He said the same thing. And now this topic has been thoroughly debunked, in my opinion, by Hatman, for example. But I want to give my two cents. And it's just I'm quite mind blown by this whole saga because it, it just goes to show that people who watch boxing, people who claim to be hardcore fans and whatnot, um, they really don't know what they're looking at. They don't know what they're talking about. And it comes from, it comes from a lack of experience, but also comes from a type of tribalism, especially in this uh, instance. For example, I can understand that many people have a love of boxing. We are all part of the same fraternity, the same community because of a shared love of boxing. So I understand. And when Mayweather enters into these fights, he is acting on behalf of boxing, or at least these people see it as, as such. They see Mayweather as the flag bearer, as a mascot almost, as a representative of boxing. And when he has these, these cross-world fights, and when I say cross-world, I mean... Uh, it's a, a fight of uh, against, uh, excuse me, it's a fight where boxing goes up against UFC, like when he fought McGregor. Boxing goes up against kickboxing when he fought tension. And now boxing has gone up against uh, social media or, you know, the YouTuber world. And of course, people have this love of boxing and they see Floyd as the representative. He's representing us, the boxing fans. And so they... There's obviously uh, an element of tribalism and it's most likely subconscious and people are willing to say crazy things to justify why boxing hasn't been represented very well against Logan Paul, who's representing the social media stars, the YouTube stars. Um, and it obviously rubs people up the wrong way, so much to the extent where they claim that Mayweather carried Logan Paul and if Mayweather stepped on the gas, he could have gotten rid of Logan Paul any time and it wouldn't have gone the eight rounds, blah, blah, blah. This is absolutely insane. The size difference between Mayweather and Paul was absolutely comical. You have a small welterweight in Mayweather, someone who started his career at super, super featherweight, if memory serves me correctly. And you have someone in Logan Paul who's, what, touching cruiserweight and is a young man. The differences between Mayweather, Mayweather's generous recorded height of 5'8 to Logan Paul's recorded height of 6'2. Mayweather famously, when he was actively fighting at 147 pounds, would put on, what, 5 pounds? Give or take a few pounds? He was not rehydrating. He's not a big guy. He's a small guy against Logan Paul's, what, 189, 190 pounds? Um, and then uh, the age difference. Mayweather's 44 to Logan Paul, who I believe is 26. Like, it's absolutely insane. And people, if we, if we take a trip down memory lane, in the latter stage of Mayweather's career, he was criticised for what reason? Mostly in terms of entertainment value. Because he wasn't entertaining. Why? Because he very rarely secured any knockouts. The last knockout Mayweather had against a trained boxer was in 2011 against Victor Ortiz. When, and I, I, that knockout in my eyes is perfectly legal. Before every fight, the referee says, protect yourself at all times. Victor Ortiz didn't protect himself at all times. Mayweather capitalised on it. 
But that fight is not a true barometer of Mayweather's power or physical prowess. Because Ortiz was blindsided, essentially, Mayweather, it, it makes it easier for you to score a knockout that way. That's not boxing, that's, that's just combat in general. But that's an aside. So Mayweather, that was the last proper knockout he scored against a trained boxer. Boxer. He then went the rest of his fight, not even really coming close to stopping his opponents. But then we get to, we're, we're made to believe by these people that Mayweather could, could have taken out uh, Logan Paul at any moment. He just had to try hard enough. It's absolutely insane. Especially when you consider, so that, that's bad enough. But then when, when you consider the psychology of Floyd Mayweather, which I did a video on prior to this fight, if you want to call it that. Mayweather is a very egotistical, very narcissistic person. And as such, those kind of people, they understand when they understand that they need to manipulate people's view of them because that's what they care about. That's one of the, their priorities is how they look in, in the eyes of others. And so Mayweather fully understood that his credibility would take a hit if he went the distance with Logan Paul. He understands that. So what, is Mayweather just supposed to drop his ego all of a sudden and what, go the full distance with Logan Paul? Of course he didn't, he had no intention of going the full distance. You could see by the expression on his face, by his body language, he wanted to damage Logan Paul. He wanted to get him out of there, but he couldn't for very obvious reasons, reasons that people seem to completely disregard. And that that disregard of these very valid reasons is because they do not have experience in boxing. They don't really understand what they're, what they're looking at. Floyd Mayweather wasn't a puncher. He wasn't a knockout artist against guys who he had a size advantage over or was of the same sizes. So how's he supposed to knock someone out who's massively bigger than him and in, like 18 years his, his junior? Yeah, Floyd, uh, Logan Paul doesn't have the, the, the training the technical ability, probably not even the boxing understanding of Floyd's former opponents. But that was uh, counteracted and balanced out by the fact that Logan Paul enjoyed a massive size and youth advantage. And those things, they, they count for something, they mean something. And people who discount that, who discredit, discredit these uh, advantages, they've, they've just never been in a boxing ring before. Or if they had, it's been to such a, you know, a silly capacity that it's virtually meaningless. And now I don't want to come across as a, a snob. I'm not about that. At the end of the day, we're all boxing fans. We all enjoy the same sport. But if you don't know what you're talking about, don't claim that it's, you know, 100% the truth because it's not. And it's a lot of the time it's invalid as well. Um, I'm, look, don't get me wrong, I'm all for rational debate. If you want to debate me on this, please feel free. But the fact is, Mayweather has never been regarded as a knockout puncher. So, and that was in his weight class. How is he supposed to knock out people who are massively bigger than him? Ask yourself that question. What, is all of a sudden Mayweather supposed to turn into the reincarnation of Tommy Hearns and has power that, you know, knocks cruiserweights over? when he started his career at welterweight. It doesn't make sense. Floyd Mayweather isn't that. He never will be that. Regard, like, it, it just, that's just a fact of life. Obviously, the psychology of it, people, they want boxing to prevail, and I understand that, but don't, don't make yourself look silly in the process, okay? Um, it's, at the end of the day, it's, I, I, I had a few years in boxing. I had like a, a fairly intensive and extensive uh, stint in boxing. And what I found over the years was sparring bigger guys, oh, it has inherent benefits. You know, if you're conditioned and if you're used to having to hold your own against a guy who's massively bigger than you, it gives you a certain endurance, a certain type of strength so that when you're in, against, in the ring against someone who is closer to your size, you typically, you have uh, an advantage over them because you're conditioned to to being in against people much bigger. That's pretty obvious. That's like resistance training, but in the sparring sense. But see, the thing is with bigger guys, 
what I found was typically they were much easier to hit, but they're much harder to damage. You know, you'll still you'll still hurt them if you punch them in the right place, but the 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 degree to which you hurt them is lesser, and also it takes more it takes more out of you to do less damage. And what I found was these bigger guys, because they're easy, easier to hit but harder to to damage, you end up investing so much energy because they're right in front of you and you just want to punch them as hard as you can and you kind of lose it a little bit, you get drawn in. And before you know it, they've uh, kind of sponged all your punches and then they start to impose themselves on you. It can make things very difficult. Um, and that's if they have a weight advantage. If they have a weight advantage and a height advantage and a reach advantage. See, people don't realize that Floyd Mayweather, he's enjoyed certain physical luxuries over the course of his career. He was very rarely in against someone who had a height advantage. And even if he was, they typically didn't have a reach advantage. And if they did have a reach advantage, it was very rarely an arm length advantage. And not to say that that's the be all and end all in boxing, that's not the case. But those are a genuine factors that can really truly influence the dynamic of a fight. If you are in, an in the ring with an opponent who has a significant reach advantage, and they maximize that reach advantage. That can say, for example, keep the, the fight at long range. And depending on the distance you are to your opponent, be it, you know, you're at long range or at mid range or at short range, that can determine the offense that you have available to yourself. And now an effective fighter learns to fight effectively in all of those, those ranges. But if your opponent doesn't let you get into that range and keeps it at long range, that's a long range fight. That is a different dynamic. You know, it requires different technique kind of compared to if you're at mid or long range, uh, mid or short, or short range. So don't discredit these physical advantages. They, they mean something, they add up to something. And if you try and discredit them and discount them, it shows that you have no idea what you're watching. And that's indicative of a lack of experience. So at the end of the day, it's all fun and games, but people are making themselves look silly for no good reason. Is there a good reason to look silly? No. Objectivity and critical thought, that's the way forward, guys. Anyway, this uh, topic has been talked to death. Let's put, put it to bed, final nail in the coffin, my two cents. I hope you enjoyed this little rant and this little ramble. Um, if you disagree, if you agree, just let me know your thoughts in the comment section. If you like my take on this video, why not give it a thumbs up? If you don't like it, hey, the thumbs down button is there for a reason. If you like the channel, why not check out the other stuff that I've done, that I've uploaded and subscribe. But nevertheless, guys, thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next video. Have a good one.